Disgaea 2 has to be one of my favorite games of all time and even maybe my favorite Disgaea game. This is what got me into tone based games and I think this also does a whole lot right. This was also the first Disgaea game that I have played so I think I might be a bit biased but honestly I don't really care this game really does a whole lot right as I said. But even as a sequel I still do think it improves on some of the aspects from the first game. Even though that I still thought the first game was pretty decent as you can tell from my video on that. And if you want to go watch it, of course, I'll link it in the end call and I'll link it in the I call somewhere on the top, you know, with whatever YouTube lets me do. And as you could probably tell, I'll be talking about the PC part of the game. There is a PS2 and a PSP version. And I know that the PC version takes all everything from the PSP version. So, you know, it's based off that one. And honestly, the PSP version actually adds a bunch of new features, uh, classes and different attacks. And frankly, this was actually the version I grew up with since even though I had both a PS2 and a PSP, I just got a PSP because that was the first one I saw. And I'm actually still really glad that the PC version actually keeps all of these features. And actually, it also comes with all the DLC that the PSP version has all for free in the base game, which is really nice. But now I think we should actually get onto the topic of the video. The first thing I really did like about this guy too when I first played it was the sprites. They all look really nice and colorful and somewhat detailed even back then. And even with the PC port, I think the game looks really nice just because you know they actually had different filters to make the game look a little bit different. And I also do think that this game looks somewhat better than the Sky one, mostly just because, you know, again, they're a little bit more detailed and the color palette is a lot better. I just think that, you know, again, these sprites look a lot more cleaner. Then there are the characters, at least the ones in the main cast. I think most of them are really well developed throughout the 13 chapters of the main story. And I really do like characters like Adele, Rosalind, and Yukimaru. I think the game story is also pretty good. It has you going to take down Xenon because he had actually turned that like uh, universe into demons. And frankly, I think it's a better plot setup than the first game since that game didn't really have a plot until like maybe around a quarter or halfway there just because it was just Lil Howell, Etna, and Flan doing random shit as you know the game went along. And this one actually gets straight into it. And frankly, actually the stakes in it are pretty high just because Adele's parents were originally like taken by it I think and he's an orphan and then he gets raised by people who knew his parents I'm pretty sure and then it's just really tragic for Adele and that's kind of why I like him as a protagonist at least in comparison to La Havel. And Let me just talk about Axel for a quick second because frankly he is probably one of my favorite characters in the game and maybe even of all time. He has a somewhat sad backstory at least for Disgaea standards and frankly he's just super funny and charming. And you can also play as him in his own story mode which I'll just go on and talk about the features of the PC version. And as I said it's actually based off the PSV version in which it actually has a new story mode and that being Axel's story mode. It's pretty short but frankly I don't mind just because it shows a little bit more of Axel. And it always, it's only like 4 chapters which I think is a decent amount of time just to see different parts of what Axel was doing beforehand. And since it's uh, again based off the PSP version, it takes stuff from the Sky 3 which also adds a bit of new extra classes and uh, some new attacks. Then there's the gameplay and I think it improves massively over the first game. It is way faster and way smoother just to control just because you know the first game I felt was super clunky so thankfully the second game isn't all of that. Then there's also the class system in this game and I know it's pretty much the first game's class system but there are a bit more in this game and it's just still just as nice as the first game. Now I've probably mentioned this before but I really don't care much for a game's soundtrack. But when I say this guy too has some of my favorite music tracks in all of all of gaming, I really do mean it. Songs like White Tiger, Etna Rock, Sinful Rose, Day Big, Crying, Ninja's Dance, and just a bunch of other them are just amazing to listen to. And I'm not gonna show them here just because I think that'll take me a long while just to sample each track, but I really do suggest listening to some of these tracks, especially the ones I suggested, just because they are really nice to the eels and frankly a lot of them 
play at some really good moments in the game. Then there's also the English dub of the game, and frankly, I really do like a lot of these performances. Characters like Axel, Adele, Rosalind, Tink are just some really nice voices, and frankly, I do really think that they bring their characters to life. And this, again, this is still one of my favorite games of all time, but this game still has some flaws, and frankly, one of them has to be the main villain of the game, Xenon. I think Overlord Xenon is cool on the surface, but you really don't see much of him. You always hear about how strong and powerful he is, and how menacing he is to other people, but I think you only really see stuff like that a few times in the game. Most times, it's just uh, Rosalind just telling you how strong he was, how much he cared for, but honestly, I just didn't really believe him most of the time. I feel if you saw a lot more flashbacks in his past with Rosalind, I would have cared a little bit more, but frankly I just don't and I can't really care for him as a villain. I just wish they had done more with him or maybe just expanded on him in the game, but you know, it's just he does nothing for me. And I've also mentioned how you can play as a different story mode, that being Axel's mode. And frankly, I know I've said it's show, but it just has some really bad difficulty spikes. What I mean by this is that if you say finish the story mode and then you start a new cycle on Axel's mode, the enemies would actually be a, li a lot stronger and Axel himself actually starts out at level 100. And this to me creates a really bad balancing just because by the time you finish the game for the first time, your characters would maybe be like level 60, 70 ish if you used almost all of them and f or at least not the main characters because you know your main characters go don't get transferred and I think it just causes a really bad balancing just because Axel starts at like level 100 your characters are like 40 levels lower the enemies start around like level 80 to 100 and frankly it's just a really bad grind and I just don't like it at all <laughs> then we get into one of the side areas that you can actually get in the game and this is the land of carnage and frankly getting there is annoying as all hell you have to spend a lot of time in the iron world, which isn't bad, but it's RNG based. And what I mean by about this is that you can actually go and fight different pirates inside the iron world. But in order to actually get to the land of Carnage, you have to get their treasure maps. And these pirates can actually show up on numerous floors. Like I think that the base pirates can actually show up on floor 1 to 99. And the deeper you go in, the different pirates can show up. And frankly, I just think it's really annoying because you also have to wait on that floor a couple of times and if they don't show up you either have to go to the next floor or reset and it just wastes your time just for an extra area but it can be worth it just because you can get some really nice characters like Axel and Fubuki but frankly it's just not worth it to me just because of all the headache you have to go through with the RNG. And then there's the Dark Assembly and I feel that the voting with the game is just completely random. No matter what, I think that the voters always change their sides on like if they're for it or not. And even if you want to bribe them, it's just really annoying because sometimes sometimes they have like they loathe it and it's just you know it takes a long time and sometimes they you know if they do then you can obviously just don't care about them. But it's just really annoying and even though uh, what they're interested in with the items change every time as I feel it's just not a good time if you're going for a build that has a low success rate and I just don't really like it as much. Honestly, despite that, I still really do love this game. To me, this game does a lot right from the plot to the main characters to the music to even the gameplay. No matter what, this game will always be one of my favorites even if I play games that might have a better story, might have better music, might have better gameplay, this will always stay on my, my top 3 list. But before we end the video, let's go over the likes and dislikes. Likes, good sprites, good characters and plot, fast and fun gameplay, great features, great PC version, great class system, great music and good English dub. Dislikes, kinda weak villain, bad difficulty spikes, annoying way to get the side area, and too much RNG in the dark assembly. But thank you guys for watching and see you guys later.